balloons that go into the sky and almost into outer space. That's right now, in motion. Every day, cosmic radiation, often the result of supernova from around the galaxy, strike and penetrate our atmosphere. And within that radiation are fast-moving electrons that can tell researchers much about nearby dying stars. But to examine that radiation, scientists must look at it before it reaches the lower elevations of our atmosphere. Researchers have relied on satellites to see them in outer space, but that proved to be costly. An alternative was sought. An alternative is to send an instrument to the edge of the atmosphere on a high altitude, enormous helium-filled balloon. NASA has a program to support this kind of research uh, called CREST, Cosmic Ray Electron Synchrotron Telescope, and it's a NASA-funded project to fly an instrument to altitudes of about 115, 120,000 feet at the edge of space to see directly those high-energy energetic particles that arrive at Earth. A balloon sent from the surface solves some problems for researchers, but raises others. How can the balloon be controlled? How will the data be retrieved? For that matter, how will the balloon be retrieved? So it, it flies free of any connection to the ground, and, and how do you control where the balloon goes, right? So that's one of the reasons. We go to Antarctica. First of all, there's daylight 24 hours a day during the local summer. So you can have solar panels to power up all the electronics and all the equipment. But also, at these latitudes around the Antarctic continent, at that time of year, it so happens that the circulation pattern of winds at the very high altitudes where we fly, the stratosphere, at these high altitudes, the winds fly around in circles around the South Pole. So if you launch an instrument around those polar latitudes in the south, the instrument will then travel in great big circles around the South Pole and come back pretty close to where you launched from. Once the balloon and the data are retrieved, all universities involved in the CREST project will begin the monumental task of deciphering the data. We're all going to work together in analyzing the results and, and we may have competing analyses of the same data and if there are differences in the results that we end up getting, we get together and try to figure out why we had differences. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.